Now we move on to the next section, which is from specific things. What are the things that we abstain from? Now, this hadith mentions a specific state. Waking up in a state of janaba while fasting. Is that a problem? For example, if a person, you know, had slept with his wife at night, he had sexual intercourse before Fajr, at night he slept, and then he woke up for Fajr prayer in a state of janaba. Does that affect your fasting? He did not wash before it. Okay, let's see. An Aisha radiallahu anha, Zawjin Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, قالت قد كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يدركه الفجر في رمضان وهو جنب يدركه الفجر في رمضان وهو جنب من غير حلم فيغتسل ويصوم فيغتسل ويصوم so basically عائشة رضي الله عنها is saying the dawn broke upon the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم during the Ramadan in a state of جنب not because of sexual dream so من غيري what did she mention من غيري حلم so it wasn't because of a sexual dream not because of something that happened at night while he's sleeping no but on account of intercourse and he washed himself and observed fast so this is for as I mentioned if a person had sexual intercourse with his wife something happened before Fajr and then he slept he woke up after dawn after the adhan and the, of course the intention of fasting was there this does not harm your fast when does it harm your fast? If sexual intercourse occurred after dawn, during the day. If he intentionally had sexual intercourse. I'm not talking about sexual dream because this is not, this is something that you cannot control. If a person sleeps in the afternoon and he has a sexual dream, a wet dream, and he finds himself that he had sexual emission, he has emitted, uh, uh, he ha there was sexual emission there, this does not affect your fast this does not affect your fast okay so hope this is clear another hadith that mentions what to abstain from okay the messenger muhammad sallallahu says as-siyam junnah fala yarfuth fala yarfuth wa la yajhal wa in imru'an qatala aw shatama falyaqul inni sa'im as-siyam junnah basically the messenger muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is saying that fasting is a shield okay and then he says, فَلَا يَرْفُثْ وَلَا يَجْهَلْ فَلَا يَرْفُثْ It has many meanings. All of it is evil talk or things that should not be said. Or it could be even, it could mean that sexual things. So a person fasting should not engage in any evil action or any evil uh, saying. وَلَا يَجْهَلْ Evil actions, evil actions. So he should be aware of his state of fasting. And then he said, صلى الله عليه وسلم وَإِنْ قَاتَلَهْ أَوْ شَاتَمَهْ if a person argued with him, okay, offended him, slandered him, what should he say? Should he retaliate? No. فَلْيَقُلْ إِنِّي صَائِمْ إِنِّي صَائِمْ إِنِّي صَائِمْ مرتين. And then he said, صلى الله عليه وسلم, وَلَذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ لَخَلُوفُ فَمِ الصَّائِمْ أَطْيَبُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى مِنْ رِيحِ الْمِسْكِ Subhanallah. So even the Messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said, the smell coming out of out from the mouth of a fasting person is better in the sight of Allah than the smell of musk. Ya yeah, subhanallah. What honor are we talking about here? Subhanallah. For a person who's fasting. Okay. And then, this is what I wanted the hadith here for. يَتْرُكُ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ وَشَهْوَتَهُ مِنْ أَجْلِي يَتْرُكُ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ وَشَهْوَتَهُ Okay, look. He has left his food, drink, and desires for my sake. From this wording here, desire shahwata, scholars have, uh, you know, deduced from this that masturbating breaks one's fast, okay? So food and drink is clear, and this here, desires, they said, well, masturbation is from desires, and this breaks the fast, for my sake, okay? And then he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what Allah says, the fast is for me, and I will reward, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala will reward, the fasting person for it, and the reward of good deeds is multiplied ten times. So I mentioned this hadith to point to this. This is where scholars have deduced that uh, masturbation breaks one fasting. And masturbation is part of desires. Okay, just wanted to make, to point it out and make it clear for the people. Now, we move on to another thing that breaks the fast. Let's take a look. Here, the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Says, من ذرعه قيء وهو صائم فليس عليه قضاء وإن استقاء فليقضي 
Whoever unintentionally vomits, he does not have to make up for the fast. Whoever, so, so whoever unintentionally vomits, he does not have to make up for the fast. But whoever makes himself vomit has to make up for the fast. Okay, let's explain this more. If a person, subhanAllah, he smelled something bad or he got sick and he started vomiting. Uncontrollably, this happened uncontrollably. So he could not control himself, he started vomiting. Does this break his fast? He said, no. He did this unintentionally and you could not control it and it happened. We say his fast is secure. His fast is secure. Now, if a person intentionally wanted to vomit, he puts his finger in his mouth and he started, he forced himself to vomit. Here we say, no. He has to make up for the fast. He has vomited intentionally. His, he broke his fast and he has to make up for the fast. How do you make up for the fast? By fasting another day for it. Okay? Fasting another day outside Ramadan. Okay, now we move on to a big hadith here that mentions something very important. Sexual intercourse while fasting in Ramadan. Okay, pay attention to this. An Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu qal. Ja'a rajul lil Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam faqal halaktu ya rasul Allah. Qal al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ma ahlakak? Qal waqa'atu ala mra'ati fi Ramadan. Qal sallallahu alayhi wa hal tajidu ma ta'atiqu raqaba? Qal la. قال فهل تستطيع أن تصوم شهرين متتابعين قال لا قال فهل تجد ما تطعم ستين مسكينا قال لا Okay, so a man came to the messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and he said I have uh, <laughs> I am undone he said I have destroyed myself and then I am destroyed he said so the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said what is it that destroyed you he said, I have had sexual intercourse with my wife in Ramadan. So he said, this is something, you know, very grave, something very big. I have done something really big. So the messenger Muhammad وسلم, you know, خلاص, this is a man now wanting the ruling. So the messenger Muhammad وسلم, you know, he told him, okay, this is the ruling. Do you find you have a neck to free? He said, no, of course he doesn't have. He's poor. قال, فهل تستطيع أن تصوم شهرين متتابعين? Can you fast? Here, look at this. Shahrain mutatabain. Two consecutive months. Two consecutive months. He said, No, I'm not able. Then he said, Okay, fine. Do you find, uh, do you have enough to feed 60 poor people? He said, No. Now pay attention to this. First, what did he say? Freeing of a, a neck. Freeing a slave. He said, uh, No. And then the Messenger Muhammad وسلم, talked about fasting two months. And then when he replied that he was not able, and then the Messenger Muhammad وسلم, moved to the thing below it, which is feeding 60 people. So here it's not choice. The Messenger Muhammad وسلم, did not give him the choice to choose one of these three. He, there was an order. The order is intended. It's freeing of a slave. That was not possible. The number two, fasting two consecutive months. He was not able to do that. He said, okay, then feeding 60 people. That is for one day, people. That is for one day. He said no. قال ثم جلس فأتى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بعرق فيه تمر. فقال تصدق بهذا. Okay. فقال أفقر قال أفقر منا فما بين لابتيها أهل بيت أحوج إليه منا. فضحك النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم حتى بدت أنيابه. ثم قال اذهب فأطعمه أهلك. So what happened is that the messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he told him. Uh, okay, he got a basket which contained dates. He then said, give, he said, give these dates in charity. Give them to the poorest person that he can find. Give them as charity. Then the man said, uh, am I to give to one who is poorer than I? There is no family poorer than mine. Says Allah. So, so the messenger said, the, the, the man said, there is no poor, there is no one, no family poorer than mine. Okay, then the messenger Muhammad وسلم, laughed. Okay, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he said, okay, fine, give it to your family to eat. So, very important hadith, very important hadith. And there is something specific regarding this hadith. Pay attention. When was it? It was, when was the sex, it was sexual intercourse on the day of Ramadan while fasting. So, three things. It was in the day of Ramadan, he was fasting, and it is sexual intercourse. And this is the hadith where scholars have got the expiation. So, he did not... 
it is not required for him to make up the day only he has to make up one day and he has to add to this making up an expiation an expiation what is the expiation freeing of a slave not possible fasting two consecutive months he's unable to do that he has to feed 60 people for that day what if it was more than one day then it is multiplied by that number so for example that have occurred three times in the month sexual intercourse in the day of ramadan while fasting so he has to you know feed for every day uh, fast for every day two consecutive months he was not able to do that he has to feed for every day 60 people and regarding the feeding inshallah we'll be mentioning it soon so now what are the things that invalidate one's fasting it is food drink and sex food and drink obviously sex it's uh, included this is masturbation and vomiting on purpose also invalidates one's fasting now if a person breaks his fast excused or not whether he was there was an excuse or there was no excuse he should make up for that day by fasting another day no expiation is required expiation is required for one instance one one situation here it is an expiation is required for those who invalidated their fast by sexual intercourse in the day of Ramadan for those who are not excused why did I say for those who are not excused well because if a person was traveling was on a journey and he was fasting and then he decided to break his fast while he was on a journey then it is permissible for him even if he broke that fast with sexual intercourse it's you know خلاص, it was permissible for him in the first place to break that fast because he's traveling a person who's on a journey can break his fast but if he was not excused for example he was a resident he's not excused he cannot break his fast so if he broke his fast with sexual intercourse in the day of Ramadan then here he has to make up one day and he has to do the expiation as we mentioned okay but if he broke his fast by eating or drinking then no 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 expiation is required so an expiation is not required for whoever breaks his fast by eating or drinking or masturbating if it occurred by these three things you does not need uh, it does not need to do an expiation he just makes up for it a day okay he just makes up for it a day and i have to mention something very important here if a person breaks his fast by eating or drinking unexcused this is haram this is a grave sin and he should repent to allah and he should then hold he should not say okay خلاص, if i broke that day i should continue eating and drinking no if he broke this day unlawfully without permission this haram in the more that he eats the more haram it becomes so if he broke his fast he should repent and he should stop and he has to make up for it one more day but if a person was excused for example a person in a journey or a person who was sick then خلاص, he can eat or, or a woman who found out that she's in she's in her uh, her her menstruation cycle started no oh, it is permissible she can eat and drink okay she can eat and drink but we're talking about, about a person who is unexcused he, he broke, breaks his fast he has to repent to Allah uh, he has to make up for it one day and he has to stop to to abstain from eating and drinking there's something very 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 important okay many people don't understand this and the expiation is only for those who break the fast with sexual intercourse in the day of Ramadan while fasting okay now what is the expiation we mentioned it is freeing of a slave if that was not possible then fasting 60 consecutive days not possible then feeding 60 poor people now the feeding part we're going to mentioning it here and mentioning it for the old people who cannot fast or the sick people who cannot fast and cannot make up for it we'll be mentioning it at the final section what it is what is it it is 1.5 kilograms of food this is just to some of them said 1.25 but just in case 1.5 kilograms of food which is rice or dates or wheat whatever is common in that country you give it to the poor man as food or you can cook a meal for them cook a meal feed them alhamdulillah that will suffice or you can give uh, the money to a charity organization making sure that that charity organization is going to buy the food for the poor now if you if you if a person has for example to feed 30 people if he invites 30 people to his home and feeds them one meal that will and you feed those 60 30 people alhamdulillah 
until they're full, that will suffice. That, that will suffice them for 30 days or that will suffice 30 poor people. So it's either a cooked meal, alhamdulillah, something that suffices that, you know, fills them up or 1.5 kilograms of food giving it raw and they cook it if it was something to be cooked or just dates or wheats, whatever is common in the, in the country. That will suffice. But the easiest thing and what happened like Anas ibn Malik did, you had to uh, feed 30 people at the end of Ramadan. He was old, he could not fast. So he invited 30 people and he fed them. Alhamdulillah, that was sufficient. That was sufficient. Now we want to mention some contemporary matters here. Okay, these are all medical things. What are the things that do not break your fast? Asthma inhalers. Okay, eardrops, okay, eye drops, these do not break your fast. For eye drops, some of them might say, well, I find the taste in my mouth, or eardrops, they say, I find the taste in my mouth. We say this, inshallah, does not break your fast, okay? Now, sublingual medication for heart patients. If a heart patient, so they have a medication that they take, it's a small tab, they put it under the tongue. It dissolves under the tongue and enters the bloodstream directly. Okay, this type of medication does not, does not invalidate your fast. Injecting medicine does not invalidate your fast, whether it's in the bloodstream or in the intramuscular, it does not invalidate your fast, given that it's medicine. Oxygen masks does not break your fast. Okay, now what breaks your fast is nasal drops because these directly go to the mouth. Okay, all forms of feeding through IV, okay, intravenous breaks your fast. Okay, any feeding, nourishment, breaks your fast. Rectal medication does not break your fast. Uh, sorry, this should be up here. Rectal medication does not break your fast. Rectal medication does not break your fast, okay? Now we move on to something important, which is a principle regarding blood. Giving blood, donating blood, and receiving blood. Does that break your fast? We have a principle كُلُّ دَمٍ خَرَجَ مِنَ الْبَدَنْ بِغَيْرِ قَصْدٍ لَا يفطر. All blood that leaves the body unintentionally does not break your fast Even if it was a lot, pay attention to this We're talking about blood that leaves the body unintentionally does not break your fast Okay, for example, an example of this, if a person had a severe wound and he was bleeding And a lot of blood has come out, even if it was maybe one liter of blood We say this does not break your fast Alhamdulillah, because, uh, you know, it was unintentional, unintentional. So all blood that leaves the body unintentional does not break your fast. An example of this also is that uh, here, bleeding in the mouth does not break your fast. In the gums, some, some of them after Fajr, they find that there's some food in the, you know, in the gums and then there's some bleeding. They say, what's the ruling of this bleeding? We say, no, this, is, this has no ruling. It does not break your fast. Okay, it does not break your fast. What breaks your fast? Giving blood donations breaks your fast, while blood tests do not. Now this is not confusing because blood donations usually are 500 milliliters, half a liter, okay? And blood tests are usually small amounts, five milli, an extreme case could be 50, 50, 10 vials. So that's an extreme case, but then we consider this a small amount, it does not break your fast. Blood donation on the other hand, it does break your fast. Because it's the amount, the amount is a lot, it's five, around, approximately 500 milli. So this breaks the fast. Blood test does not break your fast. I also forgot to mention insulin, insulin uh, injections do not break your fast. Those who have to inject insulin injections uh, before, uh, before breaking the fast by 30 minutes, yeah, these do not break your fast. They do not break your fast. This is an agreement, okay? So hopefully this is uh, clear regarding the things that break your fast. And inshallah we'll be moving to uh, another uh, subject.